Hi everyone, my name is Richard Mitchell. I am the founder of the Tulsa Game Developers here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Also the project lead for the XPO Game Festival. And we're starting to have a lot of uh, video game creation events here in Tulsa, including Global Game Jam Tulsa, which is coming January 26th through the 28th, just a little bit more than a week away. Uh, we also have the Heartland Game Expo, uh, usually around April, and of course the XPO Game Festival at the end of the year. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are saying, I'd really like to create video games myself, but I don't know how to program. I don't know how to write code. I don't know C Sharp or C++ or JavaScript. And not knowing those things makes it kind of hard to use industry standard tools like Unreal and Unity. Thankfully, we have something called Construct 2, which is what I'm going to show you today. Now, Construct 2 has been around for quite a while, but what makes it special is it lets you make video games from scratch without knowing how to code at all. You don't have to write a single line of code. All of the code looks kind of like this. This is just logic that you create using drag and drop statements. You click buttons, you enter a couple of numbers, but that's all there is to it. This might look kind of scary right now, but I promise you it's not that tough. Uh, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And just to give you an idea of what Construct 2 uh, allows you to do, here's a quick little game that I made. Uh, using graphics I drew myself with Piskel. Uh, PiscalApp.com, and I was able to make this little Mario-esque game. You know, I can run left and right. You can see the walking animations play, the jumping animation whenever I jump. Uh, I can jump on top of this bad guy here, and he will disappear. I should note for copyright reasons, this is not Mario. This is Morio. There he is in his trademark purple overalls. More of a mauve, really. Uh, but this is something very simple I was able to create. You can see that the camera follows me around. I can run and jump, do all those things. And once again, I didn't write a single line of code. Another thing that makes Construct pretty cool is that the uh, standard file that it spits out whenever you're done is HTML5, which you can run from any web browser, which means it's very easy to share these games with your friends and family. And it's also easy to upload them to services like itch.io. So very quickly, I'm going to show you how you can get up and running with a simple 2D platforming game from scratch. So we'll go ahead and close this program. Now I'm not going to go into detail about every little thing that I click. Uh, I'll link you to some more advanced tutorials in the description for this video. Really this is just to show you what you can do and how quickly you can do it once you have an idea of what you're doing. So I can open a new project. I'm just going to do a new empty project. I'm not going to bother discussing the settings and all of that. This right here is your layout. This is basically the size of one level of your game, typically. Right here, this dotted line is the window that players see whenever they first start your game. In fact, I could even start the game right now by hitting this play button, and it's going to open up in Chrome, which is my default browser. But you can use pretty much any browser. And all I see is this white rectangle, because that's all I have in the game. Now, in less than five minutes, I'm going to make a functional platform game. So I can double click into this space right here. I can insert a new object. It's going to be a sprite. A sprite is just an animated object. That's the building block of most 2D games, which it says right there. We're going to call it player. Put it right here. And uh, I'm going to resize it to 32 pixels wide by 64 pixels tall. And this is might sound arbitrary, but it just there's some logic behind it. Again, I'm not going to explain everything for this video. I'm going to use the bucket fill tool to make it blue. And now we have a blue square right here. And I am going to create a platform underneath it for him to land on. So I'll double click again, add a new sprite. We're going to call it platform. And I could probably make it any size I want because I can resize it later. In fact, let's just do that to show you how easy it is. I'm going to make it a red color, do a bucket fill, and just a big old square. Close it. That's a huge square, and it's not really conducive to a platform, but I can resize it and reshape it pretty easily using Construct. I'll put that here under my character. And right now, if I hit the play button, it's going to be a little bit more interesting than it was before. There, now we have a, a couple of rectangles, but they don't move or do anything. 
So now let's use the magic of construct to add some behaviors to these things. So I'm going to click my blue square over here in the properties. I'm going to add a behavior. A behavior. I'm going to click into these pre-made behaviors. These are very cool. You know, you see some of them: bullet, directions, car movement, custom movement. I'm going to add this platform option. This is platform movement. So your traditional, you know, Mario or Sonic style movement, jumping and running. I'm going to add that to him. If I hit play now. Something a little bit more interesting will happen. He falls down right through this platform because we didn't tell the engine that this is a platform yet. So let's add a behavior to that. Uh, we're going to click the platform, add a behavior, and it's right over here. It's called solid. So now this is a solid platform. So my player should land on this. Let's go ahead and check that out. There we go. Right now we have a functional platform game. It took me about two minutes. Let's add a couple other things. If I double click in here, I'll add another sprite. We'll call this one a jump through. This is a platform that the player can land on, but also jump through the bottom of. And we're going to resize this to, we'll say 64 pixels wide and only 16 pixels high. We'll make it a nice sickly green. And I can drop it pretty much anywhere in this world that I want to. Oop, well, I can try. There we go. And if I control and click this again, I can duplicate it. So it can make our world a little bit more interesting. So now I have a character that can jump through these platforms. Oop. Well, not yet, because I forgot, once again, to tell the game that these are all platforms. So I'll click the master object over here. I'll add the behavior, jump through. So now these are all jump through platforms. There we go. I can jump through the bottom, jump onto these different platforms. Very simple, very easy to do, and I put all that together very quickly. Now it's just as easy for me to do things like make it so if I fall off the world, the game will restart because the character has died. I can add a behavior right here, once again, to my blue square here. I can add, let's see, I can add a behavior that will make the camera follow him scroll to and then I can use the event sheet up here to add an event this is just like if then statements so if something happens so if the player click that I will scroll down to size and position if the player is outside of the layout if the player is outside of the level make something happen so if the player is outside of the level I want the game system to restart the layout. So if the player is outside the layout, the system will restart the whole layout. Let's give it a shot. So now you see that uh, the camera will follow my player wherever he goes. So now the world will scroll with me, still jump on these platforms, and if I fall off the level, it will actually restart. So there, in, in less than five minutes, I've got the bones of a platform game. Now, if I replace some of these rectangles with, you know, real sprites, animated graphics, cool music, I start to have the beginnings of a very fun and functional game. Uh, just for fun, I'll go ahead and open up my little Morio game again, and we can take a look at that again before this video is over. But Construct 2 is very, very cool. If this piqued your interest, take a look at the description on this video. Uh, I will put some links to other more advanced tutorials. There's actually an entire course on Udemy on making a retro style platformer, and that course is entirely free, so I'll be sure to put a link to that. 
But this is a great little tool to look at if you would like to participate in a game jam, but you don't have time or maybe just don't want to learn code. Maybe you're an artist, maybe you are a musician, but you'd still like to contribute to actually creating a game sometime. So take a look. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope we'll see you at future meetings of Tulsa Game Developers. We meet every third Thursday in downtown Tulsa at 36 degrees north at 6 p.m. And I hope we'll see you at one of those meetings, and I hope this video piqued your interest in game development, and I hope you start your journey into game development today.